In 2007, Steve Jobs announced the first iPhone would be released, which had received a ton of media attention. Before that, we never would have imagined spending hundreds, even thousands of dollars on a phone, right? That was until it was released a few months later. It was released and it created fans, but not just any fans that maybe use the phone once, but die hard, fanatical fans. Fans so dedicated to it, it's now become part of our culture. Apple created an empire. Hi guys, it's Melanie Woodward here from Event Planning Blueprint and the Boost Your Business event course. Now, you may be asking yourself, well, what does the iPhone have to do with events and building your event business? The thing is, plenty. In fact, the reason Apple is a success today is the exact same reason that your business can grow and provide you with the foundation it needs to succeed. Okay, I know what you're thinking. Melanie, I don't have a brilliant idea like Steve Jobs. What does this have to do with my business? That is a great question. Validating your business through social proof, testimonials, reviews, it allows you to give detailed information about your event solutions. Typically in this stage, they're not ready to hire you quite yet. This is an important stage when leading buyers through the hiring cycle because it's often at this stage that they drop off because you're not giving them the level of attention that they need. At this point, they like you or your services, but they require more nurturing at this time. Using success stories, reviews, newsletters, small gifts, or even relevant blog posts allow you to stay in front of the client and stay top of mind. The client becomes attached to you and your services because you continue to build a relationship with them and once you've done this, they'll start taking initiative to get more information about your business. They actually want to hire you. Remember Amanda? She started with no clients. Amanda works with communities to plan fundraising events and her clients include the town mayor, local nonprofits, and local businesses and organizations. In just four months of using the strategies she learned, she was able to quit her job as a nurse to focus on her event business full time. And all those clients, they're not passively seeing or attending her events. Her clients are interacting with her and each other and referring her. She's walking them through the buyer cycle. This creates more and more value and more clients who hire her. So you may be thinking, but Melanie, how do I know when clients are in this stage and ready to buy because I haven't had a structure like this before? Creating a framework to walk your clients through is just one thing that we cover in Boost Your Business. It's so important that we cover it in our first few weeks of the program. So you're booking clients sooner and faster. Take Julian, she's another graduate. She's got a small team. Now, when she started, she was just hoping clients would hire her. Now she has a few key clients, not 10, 20, or even 30. But with that small client list, she's built loyal clients by walking them through the buyer cycle. And in return, they pay her to plan their events. Her client list is small, yet she's built the business and life of her dreams. It's allowed her to spend more time with her husband and her three daughters. So far, Julian has been in business for nearly three years and she's grown her income because she started using the methods that we shared with her. She had no prior sales or business training, just the desire to spend more time with her family and help her clients. So why was she able to grow her business? Well, because she created advocates that referred her. So imagine this for a moment. How would your business be different if you had five diehard advocates? People who hired you over and over again, just like Julian has. What would your life and your business be like if you had 10 or 15 or even 20 raving clients? You can definitely aim for that, but you don't need a big client list. What you need is a small number of advocates. A small group of people who you build a relationship with and you know them well. You know their needs. You know the things that make them tick. What if I teach you the secret to figuring out who those clients are and how to make them advocates of your event business? We use a process called the offer to serve because people don't buy after your first meeting. You see, there's a common rule in marketing called the rule of seven, which means that people need to hear, they need to see, or they need to interact with a brand message seven times before they take any action to buy. People are not one dimensional. 
They'd like to see what you have to offer, right? They'd like to experience one of your events or talk to other clients about your services. Maybe they'll see your photos on social media and like it or make a comment if it's relevant. That's why it's important to know where your potential clients spend their time and what's important to them. You need to be where those eyeballs are and it needs to attract them through different mediums. Having the offer to serve framework gives you different types of engagement that helps you get in front of them and builds trust and gives you value as you walk them through that buyer cycle. This is when you solve a problem they're experiencing. Then you hold them accountable to the help that you're giving them. And finally, ask them to come on the journey with you to hire you and to plan their event. Okay, in step one, your only goal is to move them 10 yards farther or from point A to point B. You're supplying help by giving them a relevant task to do. And the reason you're asking them to do this task is because you're going to schedule a follow-up to see how it went. This could be as easy as asking them to narrow down the type of music they want or the food they want at their event, or even the style of wedding dress they'd like to look at because this still helps them move from point A to point B. And then you wanna follow up and check in, right? To see how it all went. In addition to that, you're holding them accountable. This is showing that you care and it gives you the opportunity to give more help and determine if they're your perfect client. So you want to not just get in front of the client once, but multiple times so you're getting feedback, you're building a relationship. Then you determine if they're the right fit and if you want to ask them to work with you. This is done organically when you're following up around specific tasks or issues that you've helped the client with. You don't wanna just ask anyone. If you just come out and expect or ask someone to work with you, you don't even know if you can help them, if they're the right fit or not, or if you're creating advocates for your business. So you want to follow the whole process. You wanna offer help, give the client a relevant task to complete, and you want to ask them to work with you. You want all of these engagement types so you get the full effect of building a business with advocates. Inside the course, we talk about the specific steps and details that you can use to get hired sooner and faster, and you have the offer to serve framework to get there. We'll get you through the sales process so it feels natural. Do not rely on just one place to tell clients about your business. You have to mix it up. There's a question to consider inside the guide that'll help you visualize how you can help your clients. I want you to click below and print that guide. That wraps up this episode and I'm gonna run because I have to get ready for an awards event and I want you to remember that you can create advocates for your business who hire you again and again and who refer you. For more in-depth strategies and step-by-step -step processes about how you can get clients to hire you sooner and faster with the offer to serve, check out the Boost Your Business course. So far, we've gone over how to attract your perfect client, the buyer cycle, and how to turn those leads into people who ask about your event services, and how you can turn them into advocates who hire you again and again, and sooner and faster than before. I'll see you in the next episode.